Previously on the Resurrection Series. Despite finishing second place overall at both the 2014 World Cup and the PSP Series, Tampa Bay Damage's future is uncertain as industry support and finances remained unsecured for 2015. Chad Boussier and Keith Brown parted ways in favour of Edmonton Impact and Dalton Vanderbilt returned home to Dynasty. News quickly spread across social media that the team was dead. Surprised with this news, the Damage players took it upon themselves to see Damage live another season. After weeks of uncertainty, Long-time Damage player Jason Edwards was approached by Virtue to coordinate details of a sponsorship offer that would make playing as Damage throughout 2015 more than just a possibility. Paired with the continued support of CJ Botsalis, Damage came back to life, revitalised. Tampa Bay Damage was now a blue-collar team playing for the love of the game. It was clear that inside the players a spark was starting to burn. With the loss of three players, they picked up longtime veteran Jerry Devereaux to add experience to the team, as well as Luis Munoz and Kyle Barry. The new dynamic combination of veterans, new players, and youth proved a successful formula as a positive vibe was evident at practice. Some seven days later, the team received news that new pickup Jerry Devereaux had been involved in a serious accident driving home from practice. It was just devastating. We didn't think we were going to be able to play this year. And out of hundreds of messages, one stood out from Virtue, and he just said, let's see if we can make something happen. We're all well, best friends. We're, all, we're probably the one team that all lives right here. If it would have folded out of quit, stay home dad. It's all about playing with all your best friends. Give me the opportunity. I'm ready. But I was born ready though. My mom told me that, so you know how it goes. Oh, I'm so excited. My legs are shaking. You have no idea. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to kill people. Come out here and just aim at the top left of that X. And the home's not going to be able to shoot me either. I was on the phone to Jason. He was like, we don't have no money to, to make it happen. I said, well, whatever I got to do to help you guys, I'm all in. It's almost like going back to our roots. Don't have as big of a budget. Every decision is you know, a team decision now, too. It's really just hanging out with your buddies and playing paintball. And not even your buddies, your best friends. I've played with the same people since I was probably 16 years old. Us being able to stick together is huge. Playing pro PSP is like you know everybody's dream. You know I never had the opportunity because you know I've always been with Mac Dav, stuck with it, always had RT All Stars. So it was, it was what it is. When you know we had an opportunity to get with damage, you know Mac Dav, I was like, oh, this is a great opportunity. Went out there, it was pretty easy, man. Those guys already know who I am, you know. So we went out there, I did my thing, you know, swagged it out. Shot some people and they were like, oh, Jerry, man, it's great, you know, glad to have you. You play our style of paintball anyways, your communication is great. 
Plus, you know, you got a great shot. So that shit was easy. You know, paintball is easy to me, so I did like that. So they called me up one day, and they were like, yo, you know, we're practicing against these kids. You know, do you want to come? I was like, man, sweet. It was a 13th of February, Friday. So I was like, man, you know, no pressure. So later on that day, man, you know, I'm running around, doing everything. I had my truck there, but it had like a whole bunch of shit in it. I was like, damn, I ain't gonna clean it up. So I go to the back and I I pull out my Z, you know, it was covered up. I pull it out. I barely ever drive it. But I was like, gas is cheap right now. $35, I'm gonna fill this tank. Fill it up. They were like $38. <laughs> Winning. Man, so I started driving, man, four and a half hours. Practice, everything was great, you know? So at the end of practice, you know, I'm driving to Chick-fil-A down the street. I get out, my tire's flat. I'm like, damn, what the hell going my tire, you know? I drove to the gas station, aired it up. Everything was great. I went to no tire spot. They took a look at it, changed the valve stand. They said it was not wrong with the tire. They put it back on. So I drive to Lakeland. You know, I had my friends there. So I stayed with them. We hung out, whatever, whatever. Next day, I wake up, tires flat again. I go to Tire Plus. The guy takes it out and he puts water around it. It was bubbles. He was like, oh, you know, it's just, it just needs stucco. So he stuccoed it, put it back on. I'm driving home, because I'm driving, blew a tire, you know. I was like an hour away, like an hour and a half away from home. Blew a tire, I was on Highway 27 and they got these ditches, uneven ditches, you know. So once I blew the tire, the car spun out. I hit the ditch, flip. On like the third flip, that's when I felt it. The top of the car hit my head and broke my neck. That's crazy, because Jerry definitely earned a spot on our team. He was balling like whenever we were out there playing around, and then he got in the wreck, and that's the only thing he ever wanted to do is like be on our team. And he finally got the spot, and then it got taken away that quick. But he's a very positive person. He's going to fight his way back on. Yeah, Jody. You my nurse tonight? You my nurse tonight? Oh, oh, yeah, part A. Everybody tell me with my surgery, with a C5, they say you should be only able to use your biceps, you know, you shouldn't be able to use your arms, core control. Everything that you're doing now, you shouldn't be able to do it. So everybody is amazed at the progress and everything. And it's such a challenge, you know. Everything they ask me to do is a challenge, you know. And I challenge them, and you know, I, I always win. I have to win. I'm a winner. I have to win. Every time, every time they give me a task, I not only beat the task, but I surpass it. And that's why they love me. You know, it's it's crazy. I'm just here trying to get my leg. Hey, I'm just trying to get my legs, man. That's all I'm trying to do. I ain't worried about nothing in this world, man. We have to win, man. Second place is not an option. I, if we get second place, I'm not even gonna be happy. Like right? there's nothing to be to get this far and not win. Second place is the man. Second place is worse than not making a cut. When you get fifth place, and you say, "Damn, you know, if we would have made it to Sunday, we could have won." But when you don't make it to Sunday, you know, I, I prefer that than getting second place, meaning you got this far, and for you to let somebody to come to your house and take it from you. Nah, we can't do that. We gotta win, man. We gotta win. Try to make my legs straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it again, do it again. Jerry, you're freaking me out. Do it again. Jerry's moving his legs. You gotta love Jerry, man. He just, you can't beat that guy's spirits down. He's just a ball of energy and, and personality no matter what's going on with him. So I think he's got the attitude to overcome. Even before this happened, he had that attitude. So it's a guy like that you can't keep down. He's the guy that's gonna recover from something like that. Right now, I can feel my toes, which means the nerves are back and it's burning me. So as soon as I move one of these toes, well, I'm running the hell out of here. My motivation is on another level, man. To tell you the truth, to see the support I'm getting everywhere, it motivates me to the point where I can't be down. Because every time I wake up and I read a new message from somebody that don't know me, that's just like, hey, Jerry, man, I'm here to support you. Really want you to get back out there. Every time I read one of those, it just gives me motivation. Once I'm done reading it, I'm looking at my legs saying, God damn it, move. That's the motivation I get. Too much people's praying for me for me not to succeed. I'm not gonna let these prayers go to vain. Man, I had a psychiatrist that comes to see me every couple of days. And she really sometimes try to beat the fact that I've never walked into me. Man, I don't tell that lady, man, you crazy, man. You just go, you, you, you're too negative for me.
because that's not an option. The doctor tells me, oh yeah, that's a long-term goal. It's not even a long-term goal to me. I plan on walking here, like soon. Too much people are believing right now for me not to believe. How can everybody believe in me and I can't believe in myself, you know? I can't never let myself be down. I'm gonna make it, you know, no matter what. The motivation Jerry has to recover, the sentiment that giving up is not an option, is not just the feeling that resonates inside him as he fights to regain his abilities. It's the same underlying emotion that helped see damage his resurrection when the 2015 season looked bleak. It is the will to not just come back, but come back stronger than before, that made damage rise from the ashes and Jerry wanted to fight for his place on the roster. That shared determination, motivation, and compulsion to succeed drives each and every player to perform to their potential. You guys don't want to play for 20 years old? Barely made it to the event, man. We're not going to practice on it to play the paintball field. It's supposed to be no release. Whatever, I get to watch them play and learn more than they do. So, ah. I mean, if you release the layout two weeks before, it gives everybody a chance. If you release it the day of, nobody should be allowed to play it until the day of the tournament. Our approach is that we got to at least watch them play on it and see all their breakouts, things like that, and then see their shots they're making, then go over to the pro field and actually see if there are those shots. So I think it's an advantage. There's definitely going to be some shenanigans in the middle. There's too many bunkers in here for it not to go down that side. Look at these guys taking pictures. Cheaters. <laughs> Nah, I don't have anything to do, so I'll be bored at night. So I'll take a photo. <laughs> one thing that no one was doing, like when they were in here, you can smoke down Snake too. You just gotta lean into it. Yeah, well, the two points, what was it? Brennikoff and Mishka or somebody? Yeah, they pulled, it just pulled it off from two right here. It was like a two on four. So basically, just come out here and just aim at the top left of that X and start blasting that X. And the home's not gonna be able to shoot me either. I had a great experience with Vicious. It was a ton of fun. I was living my dream, everything was going great. And um, I got diagnosed as a bipolar disorder and I didn't really understand what was going on or what was happening and basically became a little, I became a little too irrational and things ended with Vicious and uh, kind of just let it be. And I knew I still wanted to play paintball. It was just, I was waiting for this next year and waiting for this off season. And the number one team I of course wanted was Damage. Um, I've been following them for four or five years and they were the team I've always had in my heart to be on. And when the opportunity opened, first thing I did was sent Jason Edwards a message, said, look, this is who I am. I know you know a little bit about me, but I live in Florida and I'm ready to show what I got. So if you guys just give me a shot, went up there and everything worked out perfect. Things have only been going good since. Oh, I'm so focused. My legs are shaking, you have no idea. I've been drilling all week, snapping in my weird mirror and just going at it. I'm ready to go, I'm ready to kill people. I moved down to Florida to hopefully to find damage and play against them. Like I, I searched for Chad for like, two months to find out where he was playing just so I could grind against him so I could get better. I played against Paxson, I found Lewis, I played against Lewis, and I couldn't find damage. So I moved back up to New York, and for the last three years, I've been running a summer camp in New York, teaching eight to 14 year olds how to play X-Ball. In the last three years, I've trained over 1,200 kids from eight to 14 how to play competitive paintball. And that's like my drive, that's my passion, and that gave me the effort and the force to come back down to Florida this year and try it again. And when Jacob was at CFP, I was like, okay, here's my chance. That kid's pro and I'm not. I'm gonna do whatever I can to beat that kid. The kid was just communicating well, he was moving down the field, he was shooting people, he was running and shooting. He was doing everything that I like to see in a divisional player that wants to go pro. 
And I talked to him, I was like, look dude, you got great potential in this sport and you really need to go home and work. So ever since then, he's been going out to his local field doing drills, working his ass off, working out in the gym every single day. And we gave him a shot and he did the right thing. This is the best muscle Stand tall, do. lean in. 50 tower. snake. Oh my God, dude. Stand tall, lean in. It's the coolest thing in the world. Like, blows my mind. It really does. It's just, I still, still to this day, it's been, what, two months? And still just sitting, like, it's still building up. Like, come tomorrow, come the first day, I'm gonna be ready to just for blood. I'm gonna feast. I'm gonna try as hard as I can and hopefully keep my clear mind just to go out there and kill. You feel that? You can't feel this either, but I'll tell you that it feels good. Over here, we'll be switching from blue to damaged red. <laughs> ready. All new gear, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> yeah, 12 playing. 13 2. Alright. I'll, um, I'll settle for that. Wait while you're ahead. Uh, we can, as long as I don't have to concentrate that hard in the game, then we're good to go. I can pull right off the board and do that. Just concentrate on nothing. Just do that. Conditions in Dallas are hostile. Heavy rainfall the night before the game is commencing to form the playing surface. Traction proves critical with game breaking moves requiring additional thought and time to be implemented. Reliability of equipment supersedes firepower as the new dawn of true semi is born. In order to be successful in 2015, Damage needs to remember who they are. They're a team that came up in a very fertile area of the paintball world and became the best team in that area, by far, and dominated people. And if they can remember who they are and where they came from and what it took to get there, they will decimate people. A, a, a damage that's hungry to win again is, is scary for the rest of the league because they have the talent, they have the experience, they still have the support, and you add that fire to actually be good again, not just show up and just get it over with and just do it just because this is just what we do, we play paintball, we're good. When Damage has that fire burning inside of them for greatness again, they'll win tournaments, they'll mash people, and it'll be really fun to watch. Play smart and talk to each other. Yep, exactly. I promise you, we will fucking win. This whole tournament, we talk and we play together. Yep. Help each other. Help everyone. We're family. Let's go, go down there and oh, take boys. it, guys. Tampa! 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 It's funny. A lot of these guys uh, played with Team Strange back in the day, and if you look at their new Damage logo, you know, somewhat similar to the old Team Strange logo with that strange swirl. I like it. And going back to the old Strange colors. I 
knew I wanted to break out somewhere conserved to kind of get a feel for you know, where they're shooting, how far I can go. So I went just before the actual snake, pulled up my gunshot a little bit, and I realized that I can just go. So that was the first time you just dive into the mud and just get dirty. Daniel Holiday launches into the snake, getting that fresh, clean gear all nice and dirty as he crawls in past the 50 and goes into the snake, too. Going to look to get those shots across the field right away. Ooh, He's he going to get one. Holiday, though, immediately knows that shot, comes around, but he gets his head peeled off. Trades out though, but that leaves the snake wide open for Brian Smith. Agent Smith coming there past the 50 yard line. There he goes, shoots out TJ Danner across the field. Just one body left alive for AC Dallas, but nowhere to go. Paul, do you want to be down? Let Louis run snake? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Thank you. Uh, great. Yep. I love it. When they're putting me in, they wanted me to go far and kind of like test, you know, how far we can get out there. And it looks like they try to send Munoz all the way to the snake off the break, not able to make it. He gets chopped up, another body coming off, and it is not looking good for Tampa Bay damage right now. Losing a bunch of bodies early. Oh, that looked like it hurt. Paul Everett getting a couple balls in the face. One of those situations where instead of just dying like a baby in your bunker, you decided to just charge forward and go out on your shield. Here comes Ninos on the sneaky sneak snag through the middle. He's able to get the first one, and then he launches to get the second one. Nice job. My meter, AC Dallas, going to be tying this one up at two here. Hey! Where's the button now? This is my first match player coach, basically. It was a little hard coming in one time, you know, trying to push the buzzer on, on a point that we're losing. Couldn't even find the damn thing, so I almost ripped the plastic off the scoreboard just to find it. Some small little things. Slightly delayed move from uh, Tampa Bay Damage, and we might see a penalty. So it looks like major penalty just thrown on Jacob Edwards, which sends his brother to take the walk as well. I looked over, I saw the major happen, and I was like, well, hell. And so I just ran, and then like, maybe I would have died the snake one, but then I realized that no one's even looking my way, so I just ran and dove into their side of the snake. Immediately, Holiday realizes the situation, and oh, Holiday comes around, owns Roberts in a gunfight, and immediately gets a penalty pull. That sends Jackson to the box. So just two players left alive, and they are both stuck on the D side of the field. Brian Smith gets a little crazy, and he gets shot on Bluey. So it's just Meter left alive in the back corner bunker, and it looks like he finally gets a knot. What a play by Dan Holiday and Brian Smith to save the point for Tampa Bay damage. Still a body in the box for Tampa Bay. Luis Munoz getting shot on the break again for Tampa Bay damage. Coming out here to the snake side. Nico Hyde getting kind of sneaky up in the middle. He's going to come through. Is he going to get three? He gets three out of the back center. No, he's in. You're in right now. You're in the box. Get I know. Let's go, baby. When I get a penalty, I get really, really mad at myself because I'm just thinking I just cost the team the match. We got a major that really put a halt of, you know, you know, they scored a couple points off that and came back actually and took the lead from us after and we finally burned that major penalty. Back up five on five and you know just playing damage paintball. We had to slow it down. Everybody stay alive, make our moves, don't take what's not given to us, and just uh, roll with the punches. AC Dallas only have two players left alive and looks like Meter Nino got shot. So it's just TJ Danner. And he's gonna try and make that move around and they get that last kill and tie this game up. Let's go, bro. let's go. You know, we've never seen this field before other than just, you know, watching games today. AC Dallas had played a game not even, you know, an hour and a half before us. I think after probably by the fifth point, either way, we kind of realized what we could do, what we couldn't do, what was taking a lot of risk, what was super conservative. Dan Holiday just one ball, Nathan Roberts, then wrapped around and blew Nico Hyde to bits. Once again, masterful gunplay by Daniel Holiday. Dude's just sick with it. Every time I'm going out there, I'm like, all right, I'm on damage, going out there wide, let's make it happen. Get out there, get shot. No big deal, let's do it one more time. Get out there, happens again. All right, third time, you know what? This time I cannot let it happen. Let's get there hard. Normally I would run with my gun in my left hand, but for this point, it's the third time, I put it in my right hand and just dig as hard as I could. Still got shot. Got shot off the break, all three points. Of course, I didn't have my great first game that I wanted, but the team's still strong. The team doesn't rely on the snake, dude. It's not looking good right now for AC Dallas. Tampa Bay Damage is gonna win this point and pull within one. Yeah, I'll be down at four. All right, let's go, Ralphie. Hey, let's go, boys. Last point, nail in the coffin, let's go. 
I thought I was gonna be a lot more nervous, but honestly, you know, looking around in the huddle with all the damage guys, you can't really be nervous. You got damage behind you. I didn't get to play until like one of the last points, so by then I was amped. I was ready to go. I just wanted to feast on people. Point started, I overslid by far, and then I just looked over to Jason. You know, when pressure was coming on down on me, and Jason's to the left of me, he's holding his own. I knew I was gonna be fine, so. Me and him just worked up the D side. Jason Edwards over there on that Dorito side with Kyle Berry getting a spin, getting up in here for Tampa Bay damage. He's alive over on that Dorito side. Jason Edwards now dives in to that wedge at the 40. AC Dallas still has a couple bodies over there on the Dorito side. Oh! Here comes Kyle Berry. He just jumped up into that 50 Dorito. He's got Jason Edwards next to him still. I think Kyle Berry just wrapped around, shot Buley in the face. Jackson gonna take one in the arm. I think Kyle Berry's over in that 50 Dorito having a game. Kyle Berry! Kyle Berry! Oh man, I gotta tell him to stop that. That's all my boys from New York who've been with me, who literally grew me up, beat the crap out of me when I was young in paintball, and uh, they're happy to see me go pro. So they're all there backing me up and supporting me, and they're just more damage fans. Look at Brian Smith. If he did have a hit on him, I don't think you're gonna find it with all that mud. Neck to hey, toe. Fully committed, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I think Brian, you know, he tries to dig in a little too much. No, I try to come up, gun up everywhere. I had to pick up Solid Slack, you know, somebody's gotta get dirty. Thank you. There you go, Kyle. Thank you. Lewis had rather unfortunate luck. We put him in three different times. He got shot off the brake three times. But that shit happens. It's paintball. I mean, he's a runner. You know, you go to a certain bunker and their lanes are good, they're going to catch you. Uh, Kyle got to play one point and he actually stunned it out. It was the final point that we played. And, uh, you know, he held his composure. He put out quite a few good shots and we ended up winning the point. So, congrats to him. I mean, we want to bring youth up in Florida and, you know, teach them the ropes of professional paintball. And both these guys have that mindset that's going to make it work. When we're in the box. We got to go like, it, I mean, you, you did all awesome. I mean, for the 100%, but it's the fact that we don't have to walk, we can work off each other. We know what's going to happen. We also, we just smelled the consequences of the penalty. Of a major, it fucking sucks. It almost gives the guy It just happens, I know. I'm probably going to major for a foot here. I'm just saying, I got a major. I mean, we just know what it is. It is what it is. It almost will cost you again. Well, let's talk about what we can work on and be better about tomorrow tonight. Testing the paint, and you're also testing for function. Testing if Brian twitches when he gets shot. It's four size. Yeah. But mostly uh, it's uh, just good old-fashioned fun. All about the uh, keeping your socks dry today. Yeah. Professional executive uh, footwear. It's a must. There wouldn't be a team without Pops, and, and if we didn't make that happen this year, we might have made it like to the event, but that would have probably been about it. Like really behind the scenes. He is the backbone of the team. He gets things done. This stuff it seems a little bit harder than the other stuff. Okay. It's both good, but this is just well, If we start chopping, we go to this. This is right. It's all should be wonderful, but I got a little bit of both. You know, I got a the boy. It took like four guys to replace the pickle, but we got we got Mario. Yeah, you can't replace the pickle. We got Mario. We got Dean. Pickle ditched us, and he uh, Dylan is pickle. He ditched us and went to the Coast Guard, and, but I think we'll have him back here shortly. He's a workhorse too, just like his dad. We'll see if Pops can get through it without him because I think this is the real test for Pops, whether he can really get us through an event beginning to end without Dylan. Because we've suspected from the beginning that, that uh, Dylan was carrying Pops, so we're about to find out what happens. Dylan got the one-handed close too. Yeah, he does. Dylan's got that. 
Bam, and there you go. That was, a, that was good. Man. That was a good one. In the poncho. I get hit, I just remove the snaps, throw it in the mud, and dive in the next one. The big thing is that the field changed. The first day was, you know, it was rainy, water, blah, 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 and we thought that was bad, but today was completely worse. It was muddy, like pasty muddy, just sticking in the mud. You guys want uh, basically heavy guns. We don't want to run too far because we can't run in this right. Do uh, you want to I mean, run and gun alpha and you edge out the middle guy? Yes, sir. Okay. I would say edge. I, I wouldn't run and gun. I would just say hard. Okay. Just I was uh, roll the gun on the middle. Like okay. All these right. Every move you should be gun up. Only go small little bumps in this shit. You don't need to yeah. slide. You don't need to ruin your shit. You don't need to like overslide and get shot. Just creep and shoot. Creep and shoot. I mean, just go out there. Know what you're gonna do and do it. Don't play scared to lose. Yep. Go win. Okay. We're good. Kids are still in the middle. All right. One love. Party up. played Russian Legion and we knew if we won two games at the prelims we were definitely going to be in. So that was a big game for us. Moscow Legion split the field and then nice job. So nice work by Moscow Legion. Close out that point. All right, come on guys, take it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three bodies coming off from Moscow Red Legion. And a major penalty on Tampa Bay damage. It looks like, not sure if it was on Timmy Probst, but the ref came over and put Timmy Probst in the box. Yeah, but another body going down. I think it's just Axel Godin left. Jason Edwards is still alive over there on the Dorito side along with Brian Smith. Oh. So Dan Holiday gonna be sitting in the box. Here goes damage with four bodies. Brian Smith playing that edge and he's gonna get shot, I think, in the back as he dives into his spot. Damage gets one but loses one, and then they lose Jason Edwards on the fill. So just two bodies right now. There's Jacob and Timmy. They're gonna wanna cross it up and try and burn off some of this major. Here comes Moscow Red Legion attacking up the middle. They get a player up in the A. Jacob and Timmy just pumping paint through the lanes. Jacob Edwards is going to be the first one to take it as they break the cross, and Timmy Probst is going to wear it from Kevin, Kevin Cool. So Kevin continuing to play well for Moscow Red Legion. This will give them a one point lead here as Axel Godin hangs that flag up. And there's only 20 seconds left on the penalty, boys. Let's go. Hey, sir. Oh, my God. Whoa! Kevin Klum barely makes it back to the start station to tag up. He might have got pulled out for leaving early. Godin also leaves, so no snake side attack whatsoever. Dan Holiday out of the box now. Damage back at full strength. And a referee running in at Vulu. Looked like Vulu's going to get a major. There you go, Dan. They got to start with four. Uh, hell yeah, boys. Hell yeah. Go, boys, go, boys. Hey, we go. 40, let's go. Make them burn that timeout. Side or far side. So it looks like timeout being called. Yeah, we got a timeout on the field right now. I mean, it was a game that was kind of back and forth a little bit. We did get some stupid majors, but I think they got a major as well. So it kind of evened it out. That's going to do it for Moscow Red Legion. They're just waiting for the box, but he ends up getting torched. And Tampa Bay Damage gonna win a pretty quick one here. Dennis Golov gonna come across in a snake two and continue to push on Damage's side of the field. Dennis Golov's got a couple shots, Todd, if he can just put that one player in. They finally figure out where he is, but that's gonna loosen up things for Axel Godin here. Oh, wow, Dennis Golov just shot Axel Godin in the side. Golov doing Tampa Bay Damage a little bit of a favor. It didn't matter, though. But the Red Legion just drew a major penalty over on the Dorito side of the field. I believe it was three to two, and Jacob shot one of their players. He continued to play on, they gave him a major, pulled their last guy, and it ended up giving us a point. I shot that dude way early. I shot him into that hole. No point. Go. Four or five all day. Fuck him up. Fuck him up, bro. Daniel Holiday coming across. He gets into the snake. Kirill might know he's there. The Axel Goddamn goes into snake one. Dan Holiday now in snake two. Axel got Din getting picked off, and Kirill Grill's gonna get shot by a few people as he tries to make a last ditch effort to go down the Dorito side. Looks like Munoz is gonna get a spin. Munoz had a rough go at it yesterday, getting shot a lot off the break. So they're gonna give him another chance here. So both teams, full strength here. Moscow Red Legion get Axel Godin in the snake past the 50 yard line. And this is the spot right here. Axel Godin can get some kills. I don't think they know he's there yet. He's got a pull back to shoot. He gets one, gets another. Nice job by Axel Godin. Two confirmed kills for him. Almost gets the back corner on the D side as well. I was in the corner. Timmy was in the back center and Lewis was in the second Aztec next to the snake. And they were in our snake. Yelled over to Timmy 
Timmy tucked his pack in, I yelled over to Lewis, and Lewis wouldn't gun battle with him, so I just told Timmy to stay on him. And I stepped out in the open and I shot at the snake and my dude said I bounced him at a pretty shitty break because that could have opened the game up quicker, but I jumped back in my bunker. We went down on bodies and we had one of the newer guys, Lewis L, made it out to his prop. Ended up being down to like a four on three or five on three. And we just were in the right zones, crossed it up. Axel went down to the snake into our side and shot two of our people. That's why we lost him fast. But then he made a mistake crawling around the next knuckle and he tried snap shooting from like his elbow, which is dumb. So you can only come out one spot, shot him. And then I think Jacob just cleaned shop on the other side. Jacob Edwards got super sneaky over there. They're looking good, man. Dampen Bay Damage is looking like they want to win a tournament again. I just wanted to burn a little bit of time. Let's go, Kyle. Let's go. Let's go. Turn them up. I came out on D side with Jason. I slid into my Dorito. Didn't feel any heat, any pressure. Ref ones in and looks at me. I look at him. I check my side. I don't see anything. I keep going and then he throws the flag. I think we might get a major penalty. Welcome to the league, Barry. Yeah, here's a major. Enjoy yourself. You know, something could have happened. I could have gotten nicked in the leg, and the ref saw it and sprayed off and called me on it. I didn't really feel anything. The refs are just doing their job out there. I'm looking bad in front of the team, but I try to hold it out, stay in positive attitude, and keep working forward. The Russians are going to pull it off here and pull within three, but with under three minutes to play by the time he hangs this up. You got a major. You got a major. You got a major. Uh, we got a major. Uh, we got a major. Uh, we got a major. It doesn't help Moscow's chances for quick points that the field is a mud bog. Definitely not, but they're going to go charging up the middle either way. Do they lose any bodies? They lose one body coming out wide. They lose another body coming up the middle. Russian Legion definitely going for it right now. Jason Edwards standing tall over the back center bunker, just spraying everywhere possible. They like got to our Dorito really far, and we plinked the snake guy out, and I was able to run down and stab the guy in their tower. And at the same time, Jason ran down and bunkered with the guy on our side. It was a birthday bucket. Got to hang the birthday flag and win the game. Birthday boy! I can't even pick the pods up off the fucking yeah, ground, it's like man. Glue, dude. It's stuck. They're like to me. stuck it around. I gotta get the pods and then my feet are stuck. It's like, wow. I got out there, I got some Monday fine, no need. The dude looks at me, I look back at him, I stop. He's just looking at me, I go, okay, must be good. Ba 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 ba. You're hit right there. I go with this, like. Like I saw like the spray, but it didn't look like it hit me either. But when you're winning, you're more inclined to get penalties too. Like always, they're always they're watching you. Yeah. But anyways, well played game. Yeah. Very well. After we won the second game, we knew that we were definitely in to play for Sunday. So we all kind of got together and talked about maybe having all the snake guys play the Dorito side and the Dorito guys play the snake side, just to give everybody not only a different look for the teams that might be scouting us, but also for us snake guys to understand what's going on on Dorito side. Again, it was a game that we didn't need to win, and it was a game that we went out there knowing that we were going to flip sides, and also we needed to get our two new guys to play more points, get them more experience. Talk to each other across the board, communicate, sit in your bunkers if you have to. Let Talk. people go and, and let someone else shoot them. Alright? One love and go. <laughs> Anyone else got anything else? Nope. No? Damn it switched it up that time. They sent Holiday out to the Dorito side and Jacob. You know what, I think this is because they're in. Maybe try and get a different look. The game against 187, we started off like, oh, we're already in, it doesn't even matter, which you should never go into a game like that. Holiday and Brian asked me how I would feel if they played Rito side, I played the snake side. I said, if you guys want to do that. And then we talked to Jason, and he was like, yeah, whatever, that works. LP, Paul ever trying to take him out, he does, but has to sacrifice his body to do it. Trailer's still in the snake, though, for 187. Oh, Max Trailer Max Trailer inside of I feel like we came off a little bit cocky. We tried to like do some silliness in the beginning where we had all our snake guys go Dorito way and all of our Dorito guys go snake way. And we got a lot of penalties. Jacob Edwards gets a penalty sending his brother to the box. Kyle Berry's still left alive and that is going to do it. So now Upton's going to go up another one. And look at this, all the way up the sidelines. And I think that, is that Greg Lazat doing it again? You know, I love how fearless 187 is. They just don't care. Definitely helps that that was a quick point for 187 because that means Jacob Edwards still stuck in that box. I think it was a bad call on mine just for agreeing with everyone and letting them do what they wanted to do. I, I'd rather have gone out and like focused on our actual plays and making the right things happen. 
But you know, that was a lesson learned. This is the first event as like player manager, and you know, sometimes you just gotta be the asshole and just, you know, put your foot down. Tampa Bay Damage needs to get something going here. Jacob Edwards is still in the box. They're down by three. Upton's just running a racket right now. Stop, final five. You got 10, 15 seconds left. Oh, I thought he said five five. Here comes Paul Everett up the center, stabs one, still alive, gets another. Here he comes through. Looks like he gets Sloviak as well. Oh, looks like he didn't get Nick Sloviak. So Nick Sloviak is still alive. And now another major penalty on Tampa Bay damage. I got robbed, and you know who did it. You can watch the footage. You be the judge. I shot him in the leg. He shot me in the arm. I stopped shooting. I walk off the field, and the next thing I know, he's playing a three-on-one with leg hit. You know, we smoke him off the field. I walk all the way back, and then I realize they assessed a penalty, like after the point was won. That was my birthday five-pack. How often does that happen on your birthday? Like, never. And I was robbed. Hey, we're not losing this fucking game. yet pulling back within one point oh and eddie painter is going to take one we were exchanging points with 187 to, to the point to where it was five to four jason shot a guy so made it five on three but then jason made a move and got shot himself so it brought it back to four on three Obviously, it got a little bit more serious when it was a situation where we might lose this game. I was trying to get Brian's uh, attention just forever, just screaming. And uh, all I needed him to do is just look snake outside for a second because I'm going to jump in this snake real quick and end this game. Yeah, I was, I was communicating with LP right next to me and, and yelling out. I just never heard Holiday trying to get a hold of me. And then LP made a move, just looked out into a ball, so it made it three on three. Paul Everett will be walking off. That evens up the body count. Oh, Still and another tower. death. Kyle That's Barry. Kyle Berry. So the rookie Kyle Berry dropping the ball. He kept looking at Dorito's side, so I was like, fuck it. And I was pretty pissed off. I was like, I'm just going to go. And as soon as I dove in the snake, made snake one good. But then I just crawled around the guy in the tower on the snake side. He shot the prop, but it was so close that it actually sprayed a bunch of spray right on my head while I was crawling. But, you know, pretty much hit me or it was, you know, close enough for the ref to call me out. But, uh, yeah, that was probably the most frustration I've had at this tournament. Jason, what happened, bro? I got the fuck out of the can. You didn't know there was a Charlie? We're yelling Charlie the whole time. It wasn't Charlie shot me. It was back to the room top. Not being contested. I'm down. Can you hit me, Brian? I yelled your name fucking ten times. Yeah. I'm trying to get down the snake side. So if I get down, do I jump real quick? I need to watch it real quick. Oh, I went down there by myself. Yeah, I got shot by the Charlie. It's four on three right now, and Munoz is going to get out and get torched. Yeah, as Painter tries to come through the middle, he gets one, but does he get the second one? Yeah, it looks like he got Timmy as well. So that was a great job, man. What a great game by Upton 187 crew to beat the favored Tampa Bay Damage. Midway through the game, we were definitely trying. I think it was just too late at that point. It was just, we, we couldn't catch back up. It was tough. I've never played 187 and felt like I didn't have the upper hand in that match. I felt like I didn't have the upper hand. We just lost our bracket. It's always better to go in first place. Like, I mean, as manager, I guess I should have known that they were 2-0. I got fucked up on that one. I think we should have went in and stomped their faces down and went in happier and more proud than what we are now. I mean, anytime you go in with a loss, like, yeah, we learned a lot from that, but it's not what we needed to learn because we were playing different positions, we were playing with penalties and shit like that. So everything tomorrow is like right back to the second match, not the third match. So for now on, like, I think I should make those calls. Because, like, you yeah, we all, no, I know, he, because he I'm said, trying to do it as like a team, and it, the three people came and asked me, and I'm yeah. trying to like make everyone happy. Right, right, so, He's not saying it's wrong, it's, he agreed to it too. Yeah, yeah, I just think that we need to wise up, and like I get like we're all friends, we're all family, we're all here, but we're also here to win. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely And I want to win every single match. Like I get that we were going in, but I want to win every single match convincingly, and we haven't really won convincingly in the first two. <laughs> so we should have went in and tried to win That's that match said. convincingly, to know that what our plays are, are working. So just, let's take that into like future reference. It's a good idea before, now it's not a good idea. Yes. What else did we throw away? The one game, Brian, I was screaming your name like six, seven times because I wanted to, because the guy was in a Charlie, 
And then all I need you to do is look one, look the, towards the snake so I can just jump in it real quick. I can't see the trunk. He wanted to get the snake and go to their side without the guy running him down. Yeah. What? But I he he would have been the one to stop it because I can't see. The, I have that left turret, the snake side turret, it just blocks everything. Yeah, it's more or less like a just situational that, kind of thing, yeah. What he's asking, he just he wasted never so looked. much time calling for for people and he never got anything back. So if you can't see it, you just, just say I can't see it. I felt like that was already going to win. So yeah, I need to just I, jump in this I snake. That up thing. Yeah. I had a I had a bad death. Let's, let's, get, back. let's, let's get back, let's watch it, let's get some dinner. Exactly. Let me watch, watch the video. Let's go to pizza and say the hotel and watch it. Well, well, I, I got my laptop and I got some access to the I have HDMI for the TV. Is this the favorite of any years, Brian? No, do what happens in the next I mean, who could have foreseen this could happen? <laughs> it's uh, the first event of the year, and you know, it's, it's happened the last man. seven years in a row. I'm a hose man. Fire me. Got, I gotta spray the water. Oh, that's right. amazing. I agree. Uh, Big mistake. Uh, thanks. I don't know what we would do without Mama and Papa Edwards. I got mine, right? Almost? Yeah. No, you got she probably wouldn't play paintball. Sweet. I need the laundry machine before the dryer. Open. It's all open. How's that for some birthday luck? Uh, <laughs> oh, now I need quarters. There's no quarter machine, but what does that make sense? No. I'm rooming with LP Paul Everett. It'll probably be the last time that I rim with him. Even though today's his birthday, it's a muddy tournament, brought his clothes back, decided to treat the tub as a laundry mat, destroyed our tub. Just make sure you never do muddy laundry in your hotel tub, because it's a bad idea. I'll tell you right now. After he clogged the drain with his mud, he took my flosser out of my, you know, my night bag and and unclogged the drain with my flosser. For all you guys at home that need to figure out how to unclog your tub, use a flossing tool. Especially a teammate's flossing tool, there's no better way to do it. It might break it, but that's not what's important. What's important is making sure you don't get charged on your credit card for having a clogged tub. All right, so picture this filled with like four inches of swamp water. It was either use Brian's toothbrush or Brian's flossing tool. And I, I, you know, I really would have preferred to use the toothbrush, but the flossing tool was shaped perfectly. LP, I just want to let you know I hate you. Uh, I'm never rooming with you again. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to butt scoot across your bed because you're not in the room right now. Butt scooting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, LP. It's a dirty person by nature. Look at him. He probably still hasn't showered. He's just in his bed. That's right. I haven't showered yet. <laughs> Brian was a little mad. I think Brian's still a little mad about it. It'd be nice to floss my teeth tonight. I was really hoping that it wouldn't break and I could just wash it off and put it back in there. And he would I would only be the, the only one that knew what really happened with that tool. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Throughout the years of playing with Brian, you know, on this team and other teams, pretty sure like the big trend is to not room with Brian. Not that he's like a bad person or anything, he's just a little different. We like to room him and LP together, you know, they're both firemen, so they gotta be used to weird things. Well, you're my Crocs! <laughs> those, no, those are, are your Crocs, Crocs in the tub. No, those are my Crocs. No, I know, mine have a no. little scratch on them right here. Yeah, no. And look, <laughs> see that scratch? All right, all right, you're not gonna get those Crocs back. I don't need those, I have my Crocs. I'm taking those Crocs, Crocs and you're not gonna get those Crocs. How are you, what are you gonna do? Why do you need two pairs of Crocs? <laughs> You know. Give me my Crocs. No. no, I don't know what you did to them. This is set up. No, give me my Nick Crocs. was in here earlier. You guys have sabotaged my shoes. Go ahead. These are your <laughs> disgusting Crocs. <laughs> There's nothing disgusting about them. They're clean now. <laughs> yeah. After you clogged the drain. Yeah, it's not clogged anymore. Fixed it. Quit crying about it. It's your baby, Brian. <coughs> I'm going to get pizza. Go to <laughs> See that? You see how rude that is to do to somebody on their birthday? <laughs> yes. There was still a little left. I hate that guy. Can't have any now, but birthday kids. You know, a lot of people, you know, they get a sponsor and they have to say good things about it and they'll lie to you. Oh yeah, man, this is great. Really, it sucks. 
I'm not that guy, because I don't care. I'll tell you, and it sucks, but I wear it. But this mask really impressed me. To me, it looks good, and the fact that it's comfortable in my face, and I love the way it fits, and it's not really loose. I don't feel like, man, I hit the ground, it's gonna come off, because it really fits my face. It, it's kind of like this one was made for me, and it's kind of crazy that I think that way, you know? Probably, they, they probably souped it up, you know, just for me. They ain't telling me, did it on the low. They said, this one's Jerry, you know what I mean? I believe it. Hey man, I don't put nothing past nobody, man. It's a conspiracy. I'm a conspiracy guy. Snake side can. He's gonna try and keep Vitalich from getting in the snake. Phil Campbell with him. We play heat in the morning, so we're trying to check them out. See what their tendencies are, and you know, see where we gotta shoot them. That was the first day that we actually like sat down and watched the webcast and tried to like analyze games and everything like that. It didn't really make sense though, because we started watching the games and we started to watch Heat play, and you know, they had one of the matches where they were playing on straight grass before it became a mud fest. So we ended up just turning it off and watching ourselves play and trying to critique it. Kill someone to me. Leave that back center. Kill someone. AC Dallas. Really, it's just like a, just watching myself. Really, like if nobody else is here, I'll just skip to myself. Like if I didn't play this point, I would. You know, but um, it's really, just kind of like a, you know, pump up the confidence. Huh? Uh, yeah, big fan of the fan. What a play by Dan Holiday and Brian Smith to save the day and save the point for Tampa Bay Dan. Somebody's got to do it. Oh, man. Like These dudes are making up here, making crazy moves. And Timmy Probst, he's keeping those guys in their spots, helping Brian Smith and Daniel Holiday. You know, no, I did it all by myself. Well, I was just going to say, <laughs> we always spoke about Holiday. Holiday's a riot. It's probably the funniest kid on our team. You wouldn't know he's telling you jokes, but the entire time he is. I think I had played on the team with him for maybe like three or four years, and I never even knew he was telling jokes the whole time. As soon as I finally caught wind of how he jokes, he makes us laugh nonstop all the time. This masterful gunplay by Daniel Holiday. Masterful. Timmy holding down the back, bro. But Timmy helped me. Timmy's pulling the trigger or something. Can we just talk about After that, disrespect to my pods. Goes to shut the lids. It's put it gently down in a nice grass area. Half the time we just do it just to piss off. Oh. So that's why I do it, like right in front of the pits. I'll open the pod if it's closed and then throw it in the dirt. Like, oh, come on, guys. 11 seconds to go. And then I pick it back up real slowly and like, oh, sorry, and yell. Holiday is the guy that like, if you don't know Holiday real good, he rubs some people the wrong way. Cause he can be so sarcastic and you'd look him in the face and never know that he was joking. And 99% of the time he's just making a joke. People think it's over the line or like, you can't say that. It's still funny. It's just a joke. You have to be so serious about everything. That's why he is as good as he is at paintball cause there's no pressure. He doesn't care. He wants to win more than anything, but he doesn't care. I mean, at the end of the day, we're playing paintball, and it's fun. <laughs> we took off the labels, so there's, you know, we understand. So let's check out this. Root beer. So look at Brian Smith, calm, collected. No, it's real beer. He needs to do to close this no, it's real beer. <laughs> smart. Jacob Edwards got super sneaky over there on the Dorito side. <laughs> 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 our whole team is full of characters. Everyone's got their own little type of personality and their own little way of doing things. We got quite a few clowns on our team. We got some serious people, and I think we pretty much use our paintball events to like let loose and enjoy like our freedom. You know, we all have a rather stressful lifestyle at home, so this is like the place where we come and relax and get away from reality. J Rab shot Dave in the back. Get some, Dave. Get some. Yeah, he gave him the, the, the stare of death like, I hate you, J-Rab. <laughs> By far my favorite damage play. Yeah. It's pretty clean. Hey, Jake, yeah, look, it's that. shining. Yeah, anyone Smart ever questions one. if these guns work? See this guy. There's right. a little mud on that one spot there. Oh, this trigger's sweet. Right. This is actually a custom Jacob Edwards trigger. But you see the mud actually stops the trigger at a certain point. So we're, uh, no, we're good. We're good to go. So I think I went back a year last night, feeling like a spring chicken. Oh, I just can't wait to get out of this mud pit, win my gold, cash my check, 
We are back to sunny Florida, where there's no mud. Red beanie, I'm looking for a black one. I'll find it, or I'll give up, one or the other. Probably, yeah, it feels like I'm giving up. And I'll chalk it up to someone stole. If I can't find something, it just means someone stole. Not really. It's what a default to. Don't videotape my secrets, man. A little bird told me a tip that the mud has a hard time sticking to the socks because it's not like a hard flat surface, it's more porous and it bends and moves. So right now it's worth giving anything a shot because as you can see the mud's like gum. The socks will never be the same. Boom. We are next point, or next game. Yeah, that's the second point. 17 minutes left. Uh, going to Heat is going to be the easiest way to put it. I think that we're playing the finals early on. So I think if we beat Heat, then we're going to win the tournament. If we lose the Heat, obviously we're out. But I think Heat is uh, one of those teams that's going to be in the top two finals. So if we beat them, then we're going to smoke the other team out and win the tournament. I think if we just go out there and are hungry and just, just get at it and push the middle real hard, which you know, everybody has been watching all weekend, that this is a field where you can just run up the middle and wreak havoc. So if we stick to that and communicate, play a little smarter, we can win this tournament. So I think we came to the conclusion from watching and talking yesterday that we're obviously we're going back to what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. And one thing about these guys, regardless if it's the Russians or the old Philly players or anything, they feed off of you getting nervous and making crazy stupid moves. So they'll make that move and they're gonna be waiting for you. It's just like any good professional team out there, that's what they do. So if you're down on bodies or you know they're really fucking close to you or anything, just stay calm. The best thing you can do in, in finals is stay calm. That's when you make that smart decision, that's when you don't wild out and get shot in barrel or something stupid. We need to just have fun. Every time we ever exactly. had fun, we always win the event. So yeah, like, if something happens and you get shot, just say fuck it. Like, it's gonna happen. No matter what you do, you're never not gonna get shot, so. Hey guys, don't over battle. Just, if they get control, let them have control. Shoot the other way for a minute. And if you come off your lane, let someone know. Like, if someone thinks you're holding the lane and you come off of it and you don't tell anyone, they're gonna make that good move and they're gonna shoot us in the back. Whoever you were shooting at is gonna go. Even if you say, hey, he's gonna go, he's gonna go, and he doesn't go, that's better than not saying anything. Exactly. Okay? Let's get excited, man. Hey, quiet team. Quiet. Hey. One, three team, one, two, three. Team. Hey, remember guys, when you when you put the pods, shut the lid, nice grassy area. Okay? Okay? You know? I mean Ain't nobody angry. We always go over this, but you guys never remember that. Houston Heat taking on Tampa Bay damage and just a few seconds to go before the start of this first point. Calm, collect the table. Dig deep, yeah. breathe deep, relax. Just let's have fun. That's all we need to do. Come on. Alright, team on three, let's go, Jay. Tampa! 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 And he's going to get shot as well. I think this game's going to come down to who shoots who on the break. Better off coming out here. Takes a bouncer in the arm. He is clean. Damage loses the body. I definitely died a couple times stupid. With me being on the snake side, I probably should have played a little bit safer gunplay and not get into so many gunfights, especially when I had Brian in the middle already shooting the snake side. Look at Jason Edwards just wheeling and dealing from that back bunker. But both him and Smith get shot out of there. Here comes Houston Heat streaking down the field to take out Timmy Probst. Again, the last player left alive for Tampa Bay damage. I thought for sure damage would make some adjustments and send somebody hard up the middle. Just get in their face. I got you. We just got to go up there and ride or die. Yep. bounce two people off the break. We realized there had to be something to change. We couldn't change paint. We couldn't get anything more brittle. There was no time to ice the paint. So we decided to charge a little more and try to go a little deeper in the center and get closer. And there they go. They get Paul Everett up in the middle. He goes up to the A. Is he going to make it pay off? Malloy knows where he is. <laughs> Malloy going to run into a gun. 
get shot up, but Jacob Edwards loses a gunfight out of that Dorito. And it looks like Paul Everett gets shot out of that center, so that's gonna open things up for Houston Heat here. It's just Jason Edwards. He shoots Moorhead coming at him. It's now a one on three, looking to get a kill. Playing every inch of that first section of the snake. Oh, I think he might still... have bounced Ryan Smith, maybe. I think he shot Ryan Smith, so he's... <laughs> no, you know, Ryan Smith's still alive. And then they finally put the squeeze on Jason Edwards. Just too much. Well, he was fighting, though. We're on the far side. We gotta go. Come on. All right. We bounce Alpha and Bravo on the break. Hey, don't be afraid okay. to stab that motherfucker. And Greg Sewers getting shot on the break, going out to the Dorito side. Chad George getting shot coming out to the snake side. First time, really, that damage has shot people on the break. Yeah, big difference. And now pushing up in the center of the field is Paul Everett. And Fedorov. Cuts out to the outside and gets shot on the fill. Just Boucher, here comes Paul Everett. Who's down from that point? Retired. LP, go in for me. I'm good. good. I'm good. They were really smart about it. Points that we won, they would blow the horn. So those guys would have to run off instead of, like, usually we'll walk that flag in so our guys can get back and get ready. And they were capitalizing there, just push the button because they knew everybody had to run off and run back. We're on the opposite side. We're on the opposite side. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, we're ready to win that point. Let's do it again. Do it again, boys. Come, Come on. Three to one. 30 seconds. Three bodies coming off the Tampa Bay damage early here. Just Jason Edwards and Paul Everett left alive, facing five players for Houston Heat. Looking to put another point on the board, take it to four to one. Moves being made in the center. Fedorov coming through the middle, and he's going to get the last body. Flag being run in by Chad George. I don't care if I'm losing six to zero. I always feel like there's time to come back. That game, the points were scored relatively quick, and Heat smart. They knew that we were low on body, so even when they were going to win the point, they ran the flag in. They weren't trying to give us any time to rest. Kyle, Kyle. Kyle and Jarrell, Peter, Peter. Get him, boy. Get him, boy. It's just cool. Right before the point, you look over the clock, and it's like five, four, and then your eyes drop, and it's Jason Edwards, Jacob Edwards, one. I was like, let's fucking go. Took off, just running full bore. And uh, I dove in, he clipped me once on the shoulder. Just one ball got me on the shoulder. Oh, I was so pissed. I was so pissed. I just wanted to play. I just wanted to get in one battle. Finally, Damage shoots some bodies on the break. They get three bodies. Here comes Brian Smith. He's gonna make Malloy wear it and then bunker the last body out of the center. Hey, feel it right now, boys, feel it. This is where champions are made. Sack up, let's score two points and go back to the drawing board. We won that, so we ran the line back. And I was like, yo, I can make that 200. Like his paint was just a little high. If I slide early, I'll make it, I'll be fine. And Jason trusted in me and what I said, and I didn't make it. Again, damage shoots the bodies on the break. Oh, but bounce Chad George and lose a body. Oh, Fedorov gets shot. Brian Smith looking to get sneaky. He's coming up the middle. When we won it, then I ran through and uh, shot two guys. That was a momentum push for us. I feel like we made all the proper adjustments that we needed to. We started pushing the middle harder, trying to get closer to see if we can get some paint to actually break on them. And we could have capitalized from there on out, but we, unfortunately we weren't able to. Greg Sewer's getting shot. I think he might have traded out with Brian Smith, but somebody is making moves over there on the Dorito side for heat as damage is getting blown to bits. That could have gone a little differently had Chad George walked out because he was able to spread the field. Hey, who's all down? We got time out, Joe. Bounce the elbow. We bounce the 200 also. Hey, goggles are nothing at this point. Goggles are nothing. Just go, shoot high. Go close. Just fucking fuck them up. I think the move is up the middle. The guys in the aisle sides, I've been putting them. Just chill. Yeah, I've been trying to just play a safe yeah, game. Yeah, just chill. So I'll go head hunting up in the middle. All right. I mean, when we get out, boys, you know. They racked up a good amount of points on us. You know, they played great. I know that we bounced quite a bit of them, but you know, in the end, it was just kind of us just always kind of chasing the game, trying to fight back. Holiday, are you in? I'm in. Jake, are you in? Yeah. All right. Starting five. Starting five. Let's go, boys. Have a game. Let's go. Houston Heat just decimating Tampa Bay damage and a lot of these points off the break. Damage just not able to play their style of paintball here so far this morning. At any point, we could have brought that game back. I mean, if they got a penalty or something like that, it would have been a whole new game. Instead, we got the penalty. It's one of those things where nothing was really rolling our way. Oh, looks like Brian Smith's going to get a major penalty. Not looking good right now for Tampa Bay damage. When Brian got the penalty, it just kind of sealed the deal there. We couldn't play a traditional four-on-five penalty game where we were wasting time. It just, we had to win the, win the game four-on-five and then with Brian 
Brian got out, great. But either way, we needed to win that point. Just nothing doing right now for Tampa Bay Damage. Houston Heat just running wherever they want. Uh, back off. It's all good. Get ready to go into the box. Hey, the break. It's Okay, one minute. Hey, Dan, they're delaying to Alpha. Uh, yeah, cool. every time. Yeah. After we shoot for the wide spot, just turn it back in in that gap. bodies here snake side of the field. We shot two guys early on, but we had also lost the Dorito side and then Ryan Moorhead and there was another guy that was trying to work his way up the Dorito side as well. And Timmy was getting pinched really hard in the tower in front of me. I saw not the guy that was all the way at the 50 Dorito, but the guy a little bit to the offset of him. Snapped him out real quick. I got a good shot on him. So it was really his two on two at that point, but Ryan Moorhead was in our Dorito and blowing Timmy's back off. So I decided to run from the snake side around, just bunker out Ryan real quick. I thought that would have been perfect, but the ref said that he didn't spin. You guys see the video or whatever, you can make that conclusion yourself whether he did or not. It's frustrating. That would have just extended our life a little bit longer and gave us a little bit more chance. I argued a little bit, but I wasn't super pissed off because I knew that wasn't the only thing that was wrong. It was definitely deserved. I didn't even feel it. I didn't even check it because I didn't feel it. I was like, well, that could be rough, but yeah, it's probably it. If our paint's bouncing, we can't continue to play the rest of the match the same way. We have to make changes. We did. Right. How do you, how do you think about shooting for the goggles? We did. We went right. Yeah, okay, I was shooting for the goggles the whole time. Then. I'm just we, saying. We it. started pushing the center. That's, that's what I was yeah. doing. Okay. I tried to go up the middle and get yeah. close. Yeah. And I got closer. We can't do anything about that. Like, look, we made every possible adjustment on the fly to try to make it work, and it didn't. Anyone who has the most brittle paint will always win in the money battle. Like, they always will because you're not going to be able to run people down. Like. I think we did a good job. We talked more, we adjusted on the fly. Got Let's the just take it and learn from it. Um, one thing, don't get too egotistical. Like, you got shot going 200 and you're like, I'll make it this time. I'm like, do what Jacob does. Jacob got shot going 200, he fucking adjusted one baby, all right? Like, you need to talk to him. Jacob needs to talk to you when you guys come off the field. You gotta let each other know what's working and what's not working. Jacob got he was shot. like, that was a little egotistical of you of, you know, going to the same bunker two times in a row, saying you know you can make it. Like, just be smart. Don't think you can better it, you know what I mean? That guy on the other side of the field is incredible. Like, he's a great paintball player, too. He's gonna shoot the right gap. Don't think you can beat him because you know better. Like, be smart and change it up so he doesn't know where you're going. So it's a completely different look. A huge learning experience. You gotta know what's working what's not working. Obviously, whoever they had going out was ripping the 200. The only other thing I think we need to fix is, like, when we lost, when we're doing, like, Dorito side with one guy and he dies, we're gonna have to, remember we were talking about setting someone up that to look guy. that side. Like, because I'm trying to battle from back center and I can't, there's too many rap shots on me. That's something that I should have been yelling at Timmy or someone to switch, you know, like, I just tried too hard sometimes. I think we just need to, like, go back to that nice teamwork, be constructive, be, be good, be nice, be happy. I mean, other than that, I had one, like, this is probably one of those tournaments I've ever had losing. I mean, honestly, we just need to all better each other. Okay, what do you say? My mind's shot right now. I feel like that. That's one thing I were trying to work on. Kyle, what you when I was watching the games, you could have stabbed the tower the one time you were in the X, but like that, that wasn't the idea. The idea was just to go up there and well, shoot. I wanted to. The Bravo was backing off and shooting at me. Yeah. One time the Bravo wrapped all the way around on the wire side and shot at me. So That guy knew I was there, and he wasn't going to let me run the guy down right in front of him. Brian was your wise. He we all, you know, took our turns, and Jason just said, "Okay, what do you, what do you think? What do you think?" And then finally came to Kyle, and Kyle just, you know, kind of spoke his mind. And I can't say that he was wrong because he saw the game, and he, I think he was talking about LP. He's like LP, and you know, he probably could have gone on their side and, you know, go dunk that guy, you know, in the front, and maybe got another guy. So obviously, you know, LP explained the why he didn't do that, this that. But it's nice to see that he's confident enough to at least put his two cents in. It shows a lot of character on his part, and I think he's going to be a great addition for the team, not only this year but going forward. And I think uh, they had a little bit of a stronger, like, mid -game. Off the break, it would almost seem even. You don't know who's really going to win. And then about 30 seconds in, they would make that secondary bump, or they would shoot a guy. And I think that is when we started realizing, damn, we're going to lose this round. Right around Even though Kyle, Lewis, and all those guys are new, we value their opinions. They sat more than the majority of us, so they're able to see what we can't see while we're playing. So. Anything they say, we take in seriously and you know we adapt and we use it. There's also a lot that we'll be able to teach them. Our team is one of those teams where everyone has the freedom to speech. One thing that I think we did talk up on is only one point I adjusted it where it was Jacob, Kyle, and I. We went three to the side and we won that point. Even when you died, it was like Jacob and I were still dominant shit because I had some. Every game, 
we lost our Dorito guy, it was out by myself. Like, so when we had the three, it was kind of nice, like. You know what, how we were talking about the third prelim match yesterday, should have been like another practice yeah. to finalize everything. I think we should really set on which place, because we're gonna have to make plays on the fly. And we'll see which one works, like you said, the 3D side. Mm -hmm. like, we gotta get those down pat, you know what I mean? So yeah. we know what to throw at. That kind of goes, yeah. No, no I, I agree. I agree. And that's what we were talking about yesterday, that we're not gonna do the practice where we put, just flip flops or whatever, we're just gonna perfect that, that game. On when we have those practice games like yesterday against 187 where we don't need to win, we're just gonna perfect our game. So I think on, uh, in practice at YouTube, we're gonna be running, we're gonna be shooting at you up break to see what the fuck's the matter. You guys die a lot of break. Not being dicks. So I don't know if it's like the way you run or something. No, because everyone else is making it. The same route. I don't know if they're getting hit up the run, if they're like trying to hurry up and get up on it. I like the theme that I want to go wash my clothes after the fourth one. Yeah, man. Look at this laugh right in Smile, no. I don't see it. We no. can get other paint up. We know that that's Whatever. the way it is. Yeah, when you get it. brings everybody else down. Media light the night before, too. Yeah, I agree, like a bitch. Hey, right, quiet, Chief. Come on, Jake. Jake, Chief. Jacob is, he's still young. I don't think if people realize he's, he's only 19. Uh, but he's been playing with us since he was 14. Got a lot of testosterone in his body still. And this is his life, man. I remember when I was 19, I played on Strange. Yeah, I was probably the same way. I took losses really hard. If anybody knows the damage guys or if they've ever hung out with them, they know that we don't get real emotional about paintball. We hate to lose, but my thought is that I feel like emotion kind of kills a lot of things that unblinds you from the truth. Yeah, I just had a baby too. I got my sympathy weight still. Milk in the breast. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be shredded by the next event. Need to get this baby fat off. Get the baby off breastfeeding and then you're good. It's that's amazing. No, that's what gets rid of all your fat. It's amazing how fast the milk rises. Pass the nips. Good times. Everyone takes losses a little differently. Growing up, I was one of those people, if I lost, you, you wouldn't hear a word from me. I mean, hell, you'd probably have a hard time finding me afterwards. The best thing you can do is take your losses, learn from them. You know, Jake's still really young. You know, he, he seems really upset after a loss, which is a good thing. Like, I'll never be upset about someone that takes a loss, like, truly to the heart and it hurts them. But at the same time, I'd love for him to be more vocal. I mean, he's one of our best paintball players, so I'd like to see him step up and take more of a leadership role rather than someone who takes things so hard that they can't give anyone constructive criticism. And without having an actual manager or an actual coach, and us being player managers, player coaches, that's something that he's gonna adapt and learn from, and it's only gonna make his career better in the long run. It's trial and error right now for us. You know, we'll get it down. Right now it's just, you know, we, we gotta iron out all the kinks and all the wrinkles, and you know, it's okay. You know, a little few bumps in the road, but don't kill you, make you stronger. They'll win tournaments, they'll mash people, and it'll be really fun to watch. Awesome. Am I good at this or am I good at this? Yo, what are you shooting, Jerry? Dead in the crack. I felt it almost okay. went in. Okay. It almost went in. Y'all need to strap Probably up, boys, but we strapped like this. <laughs> dumb, dumb, dead ass. It was my ideal birthday, and then I was robbed by Nick Sloviak. Oh, yeah. Brotherly love, that's exactly what it is. They, uh, you know, go forgive me. <laughs> I got you. I got one more. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. Oh! <laughs> Okay, you can do it with your mask on now. <laughs> 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 <laughs>